Look at that water there. Well, that micro switch right there is probably gone. It is done. Look at that nasty green stuff that's built up on the edge of these terminals. That is absolutely inside of this thing. But you can see all the mud that is built up from the, from the uh, flood. What's up guys welcome to another episode of car smart tv and we are fortunate enough to be helping somebody out that went through hurricane helene i believe it was this cart got flooded and uh we're gonna try to get this thing going back for them again and uh, they've done a lot of stuff to it trying to figure it out already i think they've gotten all the liquids out of it put fresh new oil in it new gas all that good stuff so those things we don't have to worry about but we are going to try to get it firing again for them because I think it's probably not firing or something in that general area is not, not operating like it's supposed to. So uh, we're going to look in and see what we got here. So we're looking at a 01 EasyGo TXT. Obviously it's a gas model. And uh, this is going to be a pretty raw video for you guys because, like I said, I'm just starting out fresh here. And I'm trying to figure out for these guys what's going on. And uh, all we can do is just dive in and find out what's happening. First initial thing is going to be here to test this battery. See what kind of battery life we got. We're looking at 12 and a half volts there, so that's good. Move this seat out of our way here. All right, so initially I've got no solenoid click. That's what I was just doing was reached up here and turned the key switch on. So that's what I'm going to do now is, is hook up to the key switch, see if we got power going to it. If we don't, we'll start there. Okay, so we have no voltage going into the key switch here. We are going to start off by um, just probing these wires to see what's potentially been done. I see some extra wires that's been added along here. You can see this one coming off of the battery that's been cut. Um, but initially we gotta get voltage to the key switch before we can do anything else. So that's gonna be our main goal here. All right, so I just noticed something over here also. Take you around to what I just seen. All right, so our fuse link here which is normal for these carts. All right, I touched that to our red wire here, which goes in to your micro switch here. Also comes back out, feeds um, uh, the 12 volts to your reverse buzzer. It also feeds over here to your, your pulsar coil into this red with the white stripe wire. Okay, so we're going to get our meter, find out why we got 12 volts here when we don't have it at the key switch. Okay, hopefully I got you where you can see what I'm doing. Um, this you got two wires that go to the solenoid, one from the battery and then one over to your starter generator. The idea is, is where do I have 12 volts coming from? Is that coming from the battery? Okay, yes. So that that fuse link provides voltage to the rest of the system. But if I hook it up to this red wire here, it will automatically start making this thing turn over because it's going to be forcing the voltage into the to the electric system. Um, so I'm going to do some, some cutting of some zip ties here and get this where I can flex it away a little more and, and see all my wires together here. Um, I do see a few things that looks like it's been cut off. Uh, we're going to check all that out. So, all right, guys, so I found at least one of our problems. And we are looking at... <clears throat> Look at that water there. 
Well, that micro switch right there is probably gone. It is done. You can see all the green corrosion built up there on the green wire. The red wire doesn't look so bad, um, but we're going to get this, this water out of this box. Looks like the uh, owner didn't realize that this box may have been here, and so no fault of his own. Um, but this right here certainly, certainly would cause the uh, cart to do what it's doing and not um, using the pedal to activate the solenoid. It's, it's directly driven off the key switch because the key switch is not... The red wire is from your key switch, so it's not actually being able to shut the system off until you push the pedal. And that's the reason why we didn't see any power up there at the key switch as well. So I'm going to work on getting this thing dried up good and get this micro switch out of here. And probably have to put a new end on these wires because they look pretty nasty. Um, I don't want to put that back onto a new switch and it possibly cause an issue. Alright guys, so here we are. Look at that nasty green stuff that's built up on the edge of these terminals. That is absolutely inside of this thing. And that is what has caused it to not do what it's supposed to do. You can see that the little button that that normally is clicking isn't even up out of there. And this is just falling like it's not. That's not supposed to be that way at all. So we're going to get them a new one of these put in and then continue on from there. Also got the uh, box dried out real good. Been clean there. No, no water left in there. And I'm fortunate enough to not... Not gonna have to cut those um, those ends off because that the green stuff come right out of there. Looks like it's still good connection there. There's no reason for me to doubt that in any way, shape, or form. Um, so we're gonna try it anyway. All right, guys. Here's our new switch. No green crap, corrosion buildup, and you can see our little switch is there. Little black spot here, it's up nice like it's supposed to be. And you can hear that thing clicking good. So let's get it put in. Okay guys, there's our new switch installed. Wires hooked back up. Cut the key switch on and if it starts turning over. So I think we're good because I have the key switch on. It is not trying to turn over by itself, so let's hit the pedal and see what happens. There we go. So it's definitely turning over all on its own now. Switches in the floorboard uh, operating like it's supposed to. You can hear the solenoid clicking. I think we just got a, a battery here that probably needs a little charging. These, these people worked very diligently, it looks like, through, uh, through trying to diagnose it and find out what the problem was. Yep, looks see you can see all all the things that look like they went through um, trying to figure out what was going on here. Um, we're gonna re reinstall all this stuff for them as well. Okay, guys. So after getting that battery fully charged, it had 12.9 on it when I looked at it just a few minutes ago or before I started to try to turn it over again because we seen it was still weak in the area of trying to turn the engine over properly. So. I got to doing a little inspecting on it and the starter generator is what our problem was that kept the motor from turning over at the proper uh, speed to fire the engine and what I suspect is going on because I won't know until I actually get into it but you can see all the mud that is built up from the from the uh, flood on this thing this is not generally normal uh, so what I expect is down inside of here is looking pretty rough and that's exactly what I see from from opening this window here um, yeah it's it's a lot of like corrosion built up starting to build up pretty roughly there I expect that that's um, uh, taking a toll on the bearings on on both ends of it and so that's really hard. I mean, it, it even feels a little, a little tough to spin over by the by the bare hand. So uh, we put a starter generator on it, and we have normal operation again. So it's it's going to be fine. 
um, got to do a few little minor details we got a frozen choke cable in here probably from where the customer did say that the water was up over the seat uh, for for a good a bit of time period and I just want to say that I, I would be very thankful that um, you know it's not in worse condition than it is uh, thankfully all our electronics down in here are still operating like they're supposed to um, you know our battery's good there was no which they they took care of most of the water that was built up in the fuel they they've put new fresh oil in it um, new filter air filters um, he's got a new fuel filter here got a spare one there and uh, so yeah we're gonna get um, gonna get our choke cable off put a new one on I'm uh, going to get our air box reinstalled because I can put the choke cable on without the box being off like it is. I just I normally take the air box out of the way to do the starter generator job. And uh, so I'm about to throw that back on and get all this mess tidied up. We're going to get the key switch put back in the dash properly. And this cart will be pretty much ready to go home by that point. So, all right, guys, we're going to take this thing for a, a spin and see what we get out of it. And uh, make sure it's operating like it's supposed to and pulling like it's supposed to. guys so there you have it back to operating like it's supposed to i'm gonna get this thing cleaned up a little bit for the customer and uh i'm so thankful that they'll be able to have a piece of equipment back from that hurricane helene and be able to use and get their place back up and running again so so thankful that we was had the opportunity for this hopefully it will be used for great purpose to get that community back up and running so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget the qr code takes you to our websites and you'll find all the parts that we use on any of our repairs here and plus any accessories that you might be looking for um, don't forget to hit that like button comment subscribe thank you for watching so much guys and don't forget that we will answer any of your questions when you comment or you can just give us a call and uh, you guys have a great day God bless you all.